The Star Wars franchise has a long history of video games with over a hundred titles released in the span of the last four decades. While the majority of them can be safely skipped, there are some great games every Star Wars fan should know about. In this video I want to present 5 classic Star Wars video games that in my opinion deserve players attention in 2023, even despite their age. Please note that this is not a ranking video and it's missing some amazing titles like Republic Commando that I've made a separate video about or the Old Republic series that deserves a separate discussion. So without further ado, let's begin. The first game in my list is Galactic Battlegrounds, a real-time strategy released in 2001 using the same engine as Age of Empires 2 and you can safely call this game an Age of Empires clone as the main gameplay mechanics are absolutely the same but the setting is changed to the Star Wars universe. The goal is ultimately the same as in Age of Empires – build bases, gather resources and lead your armies to victory. The game has several story campaigns based on episodes 1, 4, 5 and 6 and the expansion pack clone campaigns also brings another set of missions based on episode 2. There is also a skirmish mode that allows you to set up game settings however you like and choose from 6 factions including the Galactic Empire, Rebel Alliance, Trade Federation, Wookiees, Gungans and Naboo. You can also create and customize your own missions and campaigns using scenario mode, the game's built-in editor. However, there is one big problem with this game. If you play it on modern systems with Windows newer than 8, you will most likely encounter compatibility issues which make the game pretty much unplayable. Thankfully, there is a fan-made mod that fixes most if not all issues and adds major improvements to the game. This mod is called Expanding Fronts and the amount of features added to the game is mind-blowing for a fan-made project. It adds several new factions to the game, new structures and units, new technology upgrades, new game modes and it also enhances graphics adding support for higher resolution and widescreen. If you love RTS games like the Age of Empires series and you are a Star Wars fan, I strongly recommend you to play this game, especially if you haven't tried it before. Rogue Squadron 3D is an arcade air battle action game released in 1998 for PC and Nintendo 64. The game presents 16 separate missions where you control one of the iconic Star Wars ships and complete different challenges and objectives like transport escort or attacking Imperial bases. The game was well received by both critics and audiences, praising its fast-paced gameplay, intuitive controls and impressive graphics for the time. Two sequels, Rogue Leader and Rebel Strike, were later developed and released exclusively for Nintendo GameCube. The game is still extremely fun to play, but from a technical standpoint it didn't age well, having issues on modern systems and unlike Galactic Battlegrounds, there is no easy fix for its problems. On certain settings, the game either won't even launch or may crash at any point of the game which is frustrating to say the least. After half an hour of googling and testing I was able to run this game properly at decent resolution, however I wasn't able to set up my DualSense controller to work with the game at all, so I had to play with a keyboard which wasn't actually that bad. So unfortunately it can be said that the game stood the test of time, though if you manage to fight through technical issues, you will definitely have a lot of fun playing this game. Next up is Star Wars Episode 1 Racer, a video game based on pod racing from The Phantom Menace. You take control of one of the pilots from the Star Wars universe and participate in races on a variety of courses spanning different planets. The gameplay is as exciting as sci-fi racing can be, 
spots move extremely fast and you need to react quickly dodging obstacles and utilizing shortcuts. The PC version of the game has two single player modes, free play where you can freely choose the track and number of opponents and tournament mode, a series of races where you aim to finish in top 4 to advance further and also earn reward points to upgrade your pot characteristics or unlock new racers and tracks. The game features an interesting damage system. If one of your engines is damaged, it will affect control of the pod and crashing into walls or obstacles, as you would expect, will result in your pod blowing up. Thankfully, you won't be disqualified, you will just lose some time while your pod responds. Now, the very good news is that the game runs flawlessly on modern systems and supports high resolutions. I have played a 2018 GOG version of this game, which is presented as a port for modern operating systems. The only problem is that cinematics are not resized properly, but other than that, the game performs great. Another amazing thing is that in 2020, Switch, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions of Razer have been released, so you can choose between all actual platforms. Overall, it's a short and simple racing game that brings a lot of fun even after more than two decades since the initial release, so I can't recommend it enough. The last two games are both part of the same series, Jedi Knight. Well, there are several video game series within the franchise where you play as a Force user, this one remains my favorite. The games I am talking about are of course Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy, released in 2002 and 2003 respectively. In Jedi Outcast, you play as the main protagonist of the series, Kyle Katarn, the former Jedi turned mercenary. And while you start the game without an access to a lightsaber or any force abilities, progressing through the game will unlock an iconic Jedi weapon as well as lost force powers. In Jedi Academy, on the other hand, you don't play as any pre-existing Star Wars character, but rather you create your own hero. Unlike Jedi Outcast, you can customize your avatar choosing their species, gender and appearance. You can also modify your lightsaber choosing the hilt type and the color of the crystal. As you progress through the game, you can change your fighting style and even switch to dual sabers or saber stuff. Both games use the same engine and main gameplay mechanics are identical. You have an option to switch between first-person view, which is mostly used for shooting, and third-person view for lightsaber combat. The character progression is more diverse in Jedi Academy. Both titles have the same force abilities, but if in Jedi Outcast your powers are fixed and cannot be customized, in Jedi Academy you can choose what abilities you want to learn and upgrade. Another major difference is the story progression. Jedi Outcast provides a more linear and focused storyline, while in Jedi Academy at many points you can choose the order of missions and the game also presents different endings depending on the choices you make. Aside from the single-player campaign, games also feature an amazing multiplayer mode that can still be played today thanks to dedicated servers. Though Jedi Academy expands upon the multiplayer experience introduced in Jedi Outcast, it offers a wider range of multiplayer options, including new game modes, additional maps and improved customization options for characters and force powers. Now, the main question is how do these games run today? Well, I haven't found any technical issues aside from the fact that you need to edit the configuration file if you want to enable widescreen. Additionally, just as with Racer, Nintendo Switch and PS4 versions were released in 2019 and 2020, though only Jedi Academy has a multiplayer mode. So, once again, you have multiple options for the platform you want to play on. And there you have it, 5 classic Star Wars games that still deserve your attention in 2023. 
Whether you're a fan of real-time strategy, intense aerial combat, high-speed racing or epic lightsaber duels, Star Wars games have something to offer for everyone. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, it will help my channel greatly. Thank you for watching.